uh, we have been uh, discussing about the existence and the uniqueness of uh, solutions of initial value problems. We have uh, so far proved the Picard's existence and uniqueness theorem and uh, also Cauchy piano existence theorem. Uh, these proofs were uh, involved and we used uh, many uh, uh, notions from real analysis to prove uh, the existence and uh, uniqueness part. And if we make use of the functional analytic technique, uh, especially the fixed point theory, then uh, this existence and uniqueness of uh, the solution of an in initial value problem can be very easily established uh, without much effort. Uh, in this respect, the Banach contraction principle can be applied to derive the existence and uniqueness of solution of an initial value problem provided uh, the, function, the function in the initial value problem is good, uh, good in the sense uh, if that satisfies uh, Lipschitz condition. Uh, and also the Banach fixed point theorem will uh, give us a way to compute the uh, solution of the initial value problem. Uh, in the preliminaries, we have already seen the fixed point theorem, Banach contraction principle, and also a generalization of the Banach contraction principle. And let me just uh, recall uh, the Banach contraction principle. If uh, X is a, say, X is a nonlinear space. normed linear space uh, and then the space is complete with respect to the norm and we call this is a complete norm linear space. Let x be a complete norm, no, norm linear space. A complete norm linear space is called a Banach space. And T is an operator from x to x, such that T is an uh, T is an uh, operator. This could be a nonlinear operator. So T is called a contraction if uh, T x minus T y the norm of Tx minus Ty is less than or equal to alpha times norm of x minus y for all xy in x and for some alpha strictly less than 1. Of course, this has to be a no negative number. If a T is a contraction, uh, example of see example if uh, fx is a, a function defined by half x is a linear function. So, it follows easily that uh, f is a contraction f is a contraction if it is Lipschitz continuous and the Lipschitz constant is less than 1 then uh, is called a contraction. If it is Lipschitz with the uh, Lipschitz constant half, so uh, here alpha is equal to half. Another no linear example is say fx is 1 by 4 sin x and we have already seen that uh, sin function is Lipschitz continuous. So, therefore, 1 by sin x is also Lipschitz continuous with Lipschitz constant 1 by 4. So, this implies that f is a contraction on R. R is a complete nonlinear space, a Banach space. Uh, now, the Banach fixed point theorem says.
Banach's fixed point theorem says or known as Banach also known as Banach contraction principle Banach contraction principle. If a T from a Banach space x to x is a contraction contraction then T has a unique fixed point say x star that means T of x star is same as x star the point x star is a fixed point. Uh, further, if T is a contraction then uh, T gives a unique fixed point. At the same time it gives a computational algorithm to find the fixed point. Further, the sequence x n defined by x n plus 1 is equal to or x n is equal to t of x n minus 1. So, x 0 arbitrary So, n is 1, 2, 3, etcetera. The sequence xn defined by xn is equal to Txn converges to the unique fixed point, to the unique fixed point. star of t. So, this uh, is a computational algorithm we will see later that this uh, is nothing but the Picard's iterands which we defined earlier. So, just um, example of a fixed point see if I have uh, function f x is equal to x square. So, obviously, x is equal to 0 that f of x is equal to 0 square that is 0 x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 are fixed point. Of f x is equal to x square. See geometrically if you look into to the graph x square and fixed point is in a one dimensional case the point of intersection of the function y is equal to x and the given function. So, there are two fixed points. So, 0 and 1. So, this uh, gives you uh, the fixed point, two fixed points are there and f x is equal to x all points are fixed points f x is equal to x cube so you can find out the fixed point they are the point of intersection of the graph of the curve with the diagonal line. Okay, now, let us come back to the initial value problem. So, the initial value problem. So, we have the initial value problem 
dy over dx is equal to f of xy with initial condition y at x0 is equal to y0. And now we state and prove the existence and uniqueness theorem for uh, this initial value problem and the proof of the theorem will be based on Banach contraction principle. So, let me state the theorem. Theorem is so let f x y be a continuous function defined on a domain d of r2 so let f be Lipschitz continuous on D uh, Lipschitz continuous on with respect to Y Lipschitz continuous with respect to Y on D Then, of course, other conditions like x0, y0 is an integer point of D, then there exists a unique solution to the initial value problem. So, this is our initial value problem. On an interval x minus x0 less than equal to h, where h is is minimum of a b by m and m is maximum of f x y x y is in some rectangle r which is inside d. So, r is a rectangle defined as earlier x y such that x is x minus x 0 is less than equal to a y minus y 0 is less than equal to b. For some a and b such that this r is inside the domain d. So, the theorem is if f is continuous is a continuous function on d and f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y on d then the, there exists a unique solution to the initial value problem on an interval x minus x 0 is less than equal to h where h is defined by this where a and b are parameters of a rectangle which is inside the domain and uh, that is alpha b the Lipschitz constant of f. f with respect to y. So, further we have so further the unique solution can be computed
from the successive approximation y of <coughs> n minus 1 x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y n of t d t n is equal to 0 1 etc. So, this uh, iterative scheme if you recall this is the Picard's known as a Picard's iterants. So, same sequence of functions which we constructed in Picard's iteration. Okay, and uh, y 0 function is just y second start from any arbitrary y 0 n is y 0. Okay, the proof of this theorem we will uh, state by using Banach conduction principle and also uh, we note that In the Banach contraction principle, if a T is a contraction, then T has a unique fixed point. If T n is a contraction, if T n is a contraction, okay, if T is a an operator from a Banach space X to another Banach space X, if T n is a contraction for uh, some n greater than or equal to 1, then also then T has a unique fixed point. So, this is known as a generalized Banach conduction principle. Generalized Banach contraction principle. So, we will be using this uh, generalized Banach conduction principle to establish the proof of existence and uh, uniqueness of solution of the initial value problem. So, let us come to the proof. Proof So, by the basic lemma, so from the basic lemma we stated and proved earlier, basic lemma the solvability of of the initial value problem follows if the following integral equation the following integral equation is solvable. The integral equation from the basic lemma y s is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y of t d t. So, we have proved that uh, if you want to solve the initial value problem it is enough to solve this um, integral equation you know this is known as a mild solution 
of the initial value problem. So, therefore, uh, we are looking for a solution of this integral equation. And uh, let us define an operator. So, let us define first a function. Let x be a function c a b c set of all uh, not a b. So, in the we are looking for a solution from x 0 to c 0, x 0 to x 1 some for some x 1 greater than x 0 set of all continuous functions defined on the interval x 0 x 1. And it is easy to solve that, uh, show that this x is a Banach space. So, if we define a norm, so define a norm for x in x norm of x is supremum or maximum of x of t, where t varies between x 0, x 1. It is called the soup norm or max norm. So, x is a set of all continuous functions. So, supremum and uh, maximum they are the same in this interval x 0 x 1 closed and bounded interval. So, therefore, x is a nonlinear space x with the this norm is a norm linear space and also it is complete every Cauchy sequence in x with respect to this norm uh, converges to a limit inside. So, therefore, it is a complete norm linear space, it is a complete norm linear space that is a Banach space it is a Banach space with soup norm. Now, we define an operator, we define uh, remember our integral equation is y x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y of t dt. Now, I define an operator define a mapping or an operator call it t from c x 0 x 1 to itself by t of y is a function at x is equal to y 0 plus the right hand side of your equation call it equation 1 right hand side of equation 1 y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y of t dt. So, f is a nonlinear function and uh, so therefore, t is a nonlinear operator from the Banach space c x c to c. Now, if a t has a fixed point, if t has a fixed point that is if you can find some y such that y is equal to t y, then y is equal to t y, uh, y is equal to t y for some y, then that is nothing but 
your integral equation. So, therefore, the solvability of the integral equation 1 is equal to the existence of a fixed point for the operator t. So, therefore, my objective is to show that t has a fixed point. If t has a fixed point that is there exist that is there exist a y such that y is equal to uh, there exist a y such that y is equal to t y then the fixed point y is a solution to the integral equation. integral equation 1. If t has 2 fixed points then integral equation has 2 fixed point, 2 solutions. If t has a unique fixed point then the integral equation has a unique fixed point. If the integral equation has a unique solution then the initial value problem has a unique solution. So, there is an equivalence between the solution of the initial value problem and the integral equation. If t has a unique fixed point then the integral equation 1 has a, uni, uh, has a unique solution. So, we are going to show that uh, this, in, this operator t has a unique fixed point and we, uh, we will show that t n is a contraction for some n greater than or equal to 1. So, we will prove that T n is a contraction for some sufficiently large n greater than 1. So, how do we go about it? So, let us uh, define, so uh, by definition t of y of x, t of y of x is uh, y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y t dt this is definition of the operator t. So, let us uh, find what is uh, t y 1 of x minus t y 2 of x. If y 1 and y 2 are 2 functions in the uh, Banach space ok. So, if uh, let y 1 and y 2 are 2 points c x 0 x 1 2 continuous functions. Then we take this difference and the absolute value this is absolute value of integral x 0 to x y 0 and y 0 will get cancelled and what we have is f of t y 1 t uh, minus f of t y 2 t d t and this is less than or equal to and also by using the fact that f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument y. So, therefore, this is less than or equal to alpha times integral x 0 to x y 1 t minus y 2 t d t. So, this uh, is one relation we will be calling is call it equation number 2. 
Now, this is uh, also greater than or equal to alpha times integral x 0 to x. If I take uh, the max of or soup of soup over t, t in the interval x 0 x 1 y 1 t minus y 2 of t you can take this is greater than or equal to t t and, uh, th and this quantity is our norm of y 1 minus y 2. So, this is norm of soup norm y 1 minus y 2. So, therefore, uh, for this is less than or equal to alpha times alpha times integral x 0 to x norm of y 1 minus y 2 dt which is equal to if you integrate it now y 1 norm of y 1 minus y 2 is a constant. So, alpha times x minus x 0 into norm of y 1 minus y 2. All right. So, if I take uh, now t square. So, my aim is to find an n such that t n is a contraction. Now, if this co constant alpha into x minus x 0 if I can bound this by a number which is less than 1 then t is a contraction, but uh, uh, this I cannot have unless I put some restriction on the uh, Lipschitz constant alpha. So, but I do not have any restriction on the Lipschitz constant alpha. So, what I do is I take a composition I take a t square. So, t square y 1. So, t square y 1 of x minus t square y 2 of x which is nothing but the composition of t with the t 2 times. So, this is t of t y 1 of x minus t of t y 2 of x. So, this is uh, less than or equal to if I use 2 if I use 2 this is less than or equal to alpha times integral x 0 to x t of y 1 of t of uh, t minus t of y 2 of t dt. Now, using the inequality uh, call it uh, this one. So, 3 if if I use 3 t y 1 minus t y 2 more ok absolute value of t y 1 minus t y 2 ok from this uh, equation number 3 I get this is less than or equal to alpha square times integral x 0 to x ok. So, it call it t minus x 0. So, x minus x 0 becomes t minus x 0 times norm of y 1 minus y 2 d t. Okay, this I can integrate to get alpha square by integral of t minus x 0 with respect to t is a t minus x 0 square by 2. So, alpha square by 2. So, t minus that is uh, evaluating from x 0 to x. So, t uh, x 0 minus x 0 is 0. So, therefore, this is x minus x 0 square into norm of y 1 minus y 2. So, this is 
times norm of y1 minus y2 super so therefore what's the conclusion if i take uh, the supremum of this quantity over x varying in on the interval x0 x1 then that becomes a norm so norm of t square y1 minus t square y2 is less than or equal to if i take uh, no okay maximum over there I get alpha square into x1 minus x1 is the maximum x1 minus x0 square by 2 factorial into y1 minus y2. So, I can continue this uh, procedure. So, if I continue this procedure to take one more uh, times t composition. So, t q y 1 minus t q y 2 just by integrating that integration is a process which is making the right hand side a good number. So, t q y 1 minus t q y 2 which you can show that this is less than or equal to alpha cube by x1 uh, alpha cube into x1 minus x0 cube by uh, 3 factorial times y1 minus y2. So, if you continue like this T n y1 minus T n y2 So, T n y 1 minus T n y 2 can show that this is less than or equal to alpha to the power n x 1 minus x 0 to the power n by n factorial into y 1 minus y 2. So, what does it say? If uh, n, my n is sufficiently large and x 1 minus x 0 is a finite quantity and alpha is a Lipschitz constant and uh, the denominator I have n factorial this can be made. So, can be made less than 1 strictly less than 1 if n is sufficiently large. So, therefore, without any additional conditions on the Lipschitz constant of f I can show that or we have seen that T n is a contraction. So, this implies that T n is a contraction and hence T n is a contraction for n large for n large and hence T has a unique fixed point by the generalized Banach conduction principle. So, therefore, this Banach contraction principle, this proof gives us both existence and uniqueness. So, T n is a contraction means T has a unique fixed point, the unique fixed point happens to be the unique solution of the integral equation that amounts to be the unique solution of the uh, initial value problem. And further, uh, the computation of the fixed point as we have seen 
x n plus 1 is equal to T of x n. So, starting from any arbitrary x 0 that gives us the or a sequence x n a sequence x n that converges to the unique solution of the initial value problem or converges to the unique fixed point. So, in our context so y of n plus 1 is equal to t of y n and y 0 arbitrary by definition of t. So, y n plus 1 is y n plus 1 is a function of x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y n t d t and you choose the initial function y 0 t y 0 x as your y 0 y 0 x is your initial condition y 0. In fact, this uh, iterative scheme if we compare with the Picard's uh, existence and uniqueness theorem this is a Picard's iterative scheme. Let us uh, see one example uh, how the initial condition is or uh, the, uh, how the solution is computed by using this uh, Banach fixed point theorem is illustrated in the following example. So, example let us take uh, a very simple system a linear d y by d x is equal to y where y at 0 is 1 which we all know the solution ok. It is a linear equation the solution y x is e to the power x we know the solution a priori ok. Here what is f? f of x y is y which is Lipschitz and if it is continuous with respect to both the variables and also is Lipschitz with respect to the second argument and it satisfies all the properties. So, let us define the iterates. So, y 0 y 0 x is a initial function initial condition 1 and uh, y n plus 1 x is equal to y 0 plus integral 0 to x here f n is y n y n t d t. Okay, so, therefore, what is y 1 y 1 x is equal to y 0 is 1 plus integral 0 to x y 0 t d t and y 0 is your 1. So, this is equal to 1 plus integral 0 to x 1 d t. So, which is equal to 1 plus x and y 2 x is again 1, 1 plus integral 0 to x is y 1 t d t which is 1 plus integral 0 to x y 1 is 1 plus x. So, this is 1 plus t d t. So, which is equal to uh, we get 1 plus x plus x square by 2 and similarly if we find y 3 x is not difficult to show that y 3 x is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 and so on 
and uh, you can see y n x is summation x to the power m n by n factorial y n is x to the power okay, m by m factorial where uh, m goes from 0 to m. So, this as n goes to infinity this goes to e to the power x as we expected. So, therefore, the um, computation of the fixed point by using the Banach contraction principle that amounts uh, to be the Picard's we see that this, this is nothing but the Picard's iteration and uh, by using that one can compute iteratively the solution of a uh, initial value problem provided uh, if those good conditions of Lipschitz continuity etc are already satisfied in the equation. Okay, so, this portion completes the existence and uh, uniqueness of solution of initial value problem. So, we post uh, three problems initially the Hadamard uh, uh, well posedness problem. A model is well posed if solution exists the existence problem and the solution is unique the uniqueness problem and the solution is stable, stable in the sense if uh, the solution changes continuously with respect to the initial uh, condition then the solution is stable. All these three properties of uh, three conditions of Hadamard uh, the one is left out is the stability the third condition. We now look into the stability aspect of the solution of the initial value problem. So, stability of solution with respect to initial condition. Okay, consider the initial value problem. Consider the initial value problem d y by d x is equal to f of x y with initial condition y at x 0 is y 0. Uh, and if uh, I change y 0 to say y 0 tilde, if with y 0 I have a solution say y x and what will be the corresponding solution of y 0 tilde what is the relationship between if uh, y 0 is changed to y 0 tilde and what happens to the solution y and what will be the relationship or how much close if uh, y 0 and y 0 tilde are very close how close y and y tilde the corresponding solutions that is our question. In other words, the, it comes up practically in many applications because uh, in many ex, you know, experimental uh, data, we the initial data we take from the instrument from a device. While taking the reading from the instrument, either the instrument may not be that very accurate or the person who is taking the observation is not uh, very keenly taking, there may be a possibility of a little bit error in the initial data y 0. If a slight error in the y 0 makes a slight error a corresponding small error in the solution then the solution is reliable. Then we say the solution is stable if a small change in the initial data results in a small change in the solution then the solution is uh, stable a small change in very small change in the initial data results in a drastic uh, difference in the solution then that solution is not reliable it is not believable. 
So, therefore, we want to make uh, sure that the solution is uh, stable in this sense. So, mathematically it is uh, nothing but the continuity of the solution with respect to the initial data. So, stability so, stability is the continuity of solution with respect to initial data y0. Again, if uh, uh, our function f, our function f is nice if f is continuous with respect to x and y and f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y then uh, the stability is also guaranteed. So, I state and prove that as a theorem if the differential equation is in the differential equation f if f is uh, continuous with respect to x and uh, Lipschitz continuous with respect to y then the system the solution is continuous continuous uh, changing continuously with respect to the initial data or the solution the system is stable. So, I state uh, and prove the theorem. So, theorem is suppose that f of x y is continuous on d a subset of r 2 and Lipschitz continuous with respect to y on d then the solution of the initial value problem dy by dx is equal to f of x y y at x 0 is y 0 is stable or solution changes continuously with respect to the initial data. So, the initial data y 0. So, proof is uh, uh, straightforward by using Gronwald's inequality. Proof let y0 and y0 tilde be two initial data points and let so since f is a Lipschitz it has a uh, solution it has a unique solution for every x 0 uh, every y 0 since y you now with y 0 there exists a unique solution and y 0 tilde also there is a unique solution. So, because of the Lipschitz continuity. So, if we choose a two initial conditions y 0 and y 0 tilde there, there are two uh, unique solutions so, let y x and y tilde x be the corresponding uh, solutions of IVP. Okay? So, such solution exists and such solutions are unique. So, therefore, what we have is corresponding to y 0 we have a solution y x is equal to y 0 plus 
integral x0 to x f of t y t dt and with the y0 tilde the solution is y tilde x is equal to y0 tilde plus integral x0 to x f of t y tilde t dt. So, there are two solutions. If I find the difference say y x minus y tilde and I take the absolute value which is less than or equal to taking the difference y 0 minus y 0 tilde plus integral x 0 to x and uh, since f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument one alpha comes out. So, this is y t minus y tilde t dt by Lipschitz continuity. f with respect to y. Now, uh, using by Gronwald's inequality by Gronwald's inequality okay, we can see left hand side and right hand side both you have y x minus y tilde. So, that can be you know, bounded by another function on one side that is y x minus y tilde x is less than or equal to y 0 minus y 0 tilde into exponential alpha times integral x 0 to x dt. And this can be bounded this is less than or equal to y 0 minus y 0 tilde e to the power alpha into x minus x 0 and x minus x 0 uh, this can be bounded by x, uh, h or if you take, take x 1. Okay. So, that is h uh, less than equal to y 0 minus y 0 tilde into e to the power alpha x 1 minus x 0. So, what does it say? It says that y x minus y tilde x is less than or equal to y 0 minus y 0 tilde e to the power alpha x 1 minus x 0 which is a finite quantity. And so, whenever y 0 so for every small change in y 0 the difference between y 0 and y 0 tilde is small then the corresponding difference between y x and y tilde is also small. So, for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta the delta is given by epsilon by e to the power alpha x 1 minus x 0. If I choose this delta then it follows that this y is continuous with respect to y 0. So, now it is obvious that the solution is also continuous with the initial data. So, therefore, if uh, a function if the initial value problem the uh, function satisfies a Lipschitz condi con a type condition then the solution is also stable with respect to the initial data. Okay, so, with this uh, we finish the stability aspect of the solution we have seen the existence the uniqueness and stability. Okay. Bye.